we are on a, uh, a quest. All right, so we have found the very top. That's it. Liking it. <laughs> we are on a, uh, a quest to get to the top of Buffalo Point on Antelope Island on the Great Salt Lake. And I'm tripping over rocks. So Buffalo Point, not that far from the parking area, but it is quite the hike. You can see it's uh, kind of rough getting up there to where the, uh, the wood railing is. A lot of loose rock. But the view should be epic. All right, so we walked up the trail to the very top. Very panoramic view. But there's some rocks over here. We're going to get to the highest point at the top of this trail. So we're going to go see if we can get on one of those rocks and look 360 degrees at what's around us. It looks like it's all the lake. All right, so we have found the very top. I'm balancing on a, uh, a rock up here. All the mountains around us are full of snow. It's about 55 degrees, no wind right now, but it comes up in gusts and it gets really cold. Quite the adventure. A Couple of bison right over here. You can see them in frame, one, two. Well, you don't want to get too close to them. Those are pretty good size, not as big as I've seen, but I just want to leave them alone. You never know when they're having a bad day. I see a lot of videos online of people uh, messing with those critters. Pretty docile until you mess with them. Okay, next location here on Antelope Island, we are at Gar Ranch. And this is a historic ranch that's on the island. And with every ranch comes old farm equipment. Now, we've never been here, of course, on Antelope Island. Just going to explore it. Take a look at what is here. We're pretty large. Looks like there's uh, quite a bit of buildings and, and things. A little bit of history here. So let's go explore. Okay, there's a placard here kind of set off by itself it says ranching on antelope island uh and let's see island ranching company 1848 continuous ranching for 133 years we're at uh, gar farm which is here gar family farm stringham family 1855 to 1871 walker family 1885 to 1903 see kind of the layout of what the farm would look like. Bison, horse, ranching, a lot of cattle. It looks like it was uh, from 1871 to 1876. Christopher Layton contracted to keep 7,000 sheep on the island. By 1894, most of the horses had been removed or shot. So it was a horse island, and then they uh, removed them for the sheep. So in 1972, as late as 1972, there were 400 head of buffalo here on the island. So this ranch is now a state park. And uh, very interesting, but boy, it's got a history. Uh, what is it, from 1848 on? Three or four major families. And everything that's on the island was incorporated. Uh, from the sheep, of course, buffalo, a lot of pheasant were brought in as well. So great history. The old historic bell that was at GS Bell Company, Hillsboro. Oh, is it Hillsboro, Oregon? I doubt it. <laughs> Makes pretty good noise. Maybe that called people to dinner. I'm gonna go in the first old building here and see what's in here. Some ranching. There's a little one, happy birthday girl. Looks like they had a, uh, in this first old building, Okay. Oh, wow, look at you found a lot of tools. Well, this looks like it might have been, of course, the tool shop, but a blacksmith shop. And because one of the reasons I think that, a lot of tools here, but this right here looks almost like a, a furnace area where they would have heated up to do some blacksmithing. There is horsey shoes. 
So we got Eva with us today, our granddaughter. She's turning five today. So we decided we'd uh, go to Salt Lake and have a little celebration. Went and saw the uh, the women's soccer game last night. First game of the season. It was awesome. And there's the anvil. So right here, if you turn this, I believe it's going to create air. And see, it's a bellow almost for the furnace. Okay, I won't touch. But that right there would create air and make this very hot and make it for blacksmithing. Yeah. And that's probably where they laid some of the iron and a press right there as well. A lot of old stuff in here. This building looks like it was uh, reworked a little bit maybe, but the ranch is pretty old. A lot of these things, I don't know what they are. This has got like a wheel on one side to roll up like wire or something. Maybe they what they use that for. I would turn and roll stuff up right there. So this is a very nice uh, area. It's really well put together. Got the old bells you need to put on the horse for a sleigh ride. Some wood stoves. The old Buffalo Bill poster. Buffalo, Buffalo Bill himself right there. Salutes you from the saddle at each performance. I guess those performances were something to see. I'm always curious as to what I'm looking at here. Sheep ranching, let's say we're, we're big here from 1911 to 1951. Sheep ranching was huge in Utah. Old chest here with a lot of, uh, well, I think this is what they used to rub together to separate cotton and wool. You'd rub those two together and separate it. So it says that uh, modernization from 1941 to 1981, the waters of the Great Salt Lake have long been kept um, and, or kept the ranch isolated uh, and inaccessible to modern society. However, the benefits of advancing civilization slowly found their way to the island, like the old washing machines and, and things. So it was until the middle of the 20th century that the ranch's inhabitants were able to enjoy modern conveniences that most Americans already had and uh, were granted. See a lot of old presses, machinery, maybe steam operated. Some old sleds there. That old bike, my gosh, that thing is, that's pretty old. A bigger sled. Now I found this up here. Uh, this is easy to miss, but look at the old radio. The birthday girl found herself a saddle. Called out a wooden horse right there. Giddy up. Can you say giddy up? There you go. Some more tools here. Lots of tools and old anvils. Stop, no trespassing. This means you from the Island Ranching Company. Somebody shot that up pretty good. This little original uh, sheep's cabin here. You can see the uh, herders used to go stay in these. The uh, the original tiny home, but on a wagon. I'm gonna take a look inside there. So inside this little sheep herders cabin, you can see it's got a little wood stove, cabinets, and everything. A couple little windows, storage underneath. I guess that would be your chest of drawers. Maybe you keep your socks and. Underwear, whatever in there, pants, clothes. Pretty nice. You can practice some roping out here too. Just like the little ones do. Some machinery there. What would that have been? Interesting. Man, it is a beautiful day out here. Absolutely tranquil. This looks like outhouses over here, but I don't know if they are or not what they were. Maybe they had uh, maybe they had some power in there or something. Two doors side by side it almost looks like an old outhouse. Probably not though. An old combine. But not that old. Again this ranch has been here for a while. Imagine it started out. A lot of these buildings are extremely old. Then they expanded and modernized. Snow capped mountains in the back and Salt Lake out there. Some horses over here as well. Here's the horses out here. They definitely still have their winter coat on, waiting to get brushed out for spring.
There's a good sized silo here. There's a placard over here telling a little story about it. So it says this silo was used to store grain uh, that was sold to Salt Lake City before the use of the auger, a box pulley system we used to fill a large silo. Uh, a box was filled with grain and then hoisted to the top of the silo with a horse and pulley system. As uh, each section of the silo was filled, the door was closed and the platform was raised to the next section to be filled uh, rather than grain. This silo now houses a nesting barn for owls. It says, please respect the space. There's one of the doors there, if you can see that. Sorry for the sun. That's how they would have sealed it up right there. Okay, there's a couple old, uh, looks like ranch hand houses over here. One here as well. We get to go in, let's take a look. Oh, so this first door here is actually the bathroom. Got a shower, commode, cement floor, and washing areas here. So this is obviously the living quarters, fireplace, where you have the family dinner, some pioneer clothes, one bedroom. This is one of the main living quarters, like a living room. Another fireplace. Two more bedrooms here. So uh, for living quarters, two main bedrooms. So a three bedroom place, and then also it had that outside bathroom, which probably was a place for the ranch hands to wash up outside of the uh, main quarters of the house. Well, take a look at this building. It's uh, separate from the main living quarters there. You can go in down here now. Old root cellar down here. Probably where you kept all the perishables and ice if you had it, probably. Yeah, this would have been the area where you kept all your cannon and everything you got ready to store for the winter. In the winter time, you better eat out of jars and canned goods because it gets covered in snow. Yeah, this is definitely the, the bunkhouse. And the, uh, the bathroom and the washing area right there for the people who bunked here, right next to the main quarters. The bunkhouse where the cowboys lived. The ranch hands. Four bunks in here. And your heat right in the middle. Probably could warm up your coffee right there in the mornings. Okay, do it again. Yeah. This is another uh, underground storage area. Old building. Bear with me here because I lost my camera battery and went dead on me, and I'm way out here. Can't get another one. But this is interesting. There's a lot of water in here. A lot of stone. Maybe this is where uh, they actually had a little well or uh, water coming in. Old milk cans back there, but yeah, it's just a wood ceiling. Obviously kept nice and cool for storage. Hopefully you can hear me okay on the iPhone. 
I'm gonna walk in here. This is the uh, the barn where they did all the sheep shearing. And these were motorized with belts. And they gave power that went up here. And the sheep would be up in here and they would shear them. And it would fall down and it would bag down in here. And we saw one of these in Cedar City because again, uh, I guess sheep herding, sheeping was very important uh, as part of youth culture and of course revenue. Pretty big operation. You see the conveyor belts up there running. We'll see if we can get up there and show you the power heads for the sheep shearing uh, utensils of the shears. So here it is. So this is the oh, it's right here, Dad. mechanical part that we twist to turn and you would hook the shears up. You would mechanically run the shears of the sheep that were in these pens. And they would shear them in the conveyor belt here, where you would run it, run it down, and then they would bag it off of this conveyor belt system. Pretty heavy duty operation. Every one of these pens had an area where the sheep would be. Sheep would come in one side, out the other. And that's the way it worked. And there's the power pulley. Right over here, the ran this full line. See, this is the uh, system where the shear would be at the bottom there, but these mechanical pieces turned off of that head. I'm gonna run those shears. This looks about the, where they would suspend sheep, actually. Take their feet off the ground to shear them. Old scale there. Then here's all the mechanical pieces that would have hooked up on those heads to run the shears. Pulley system here. We run the line in this belt run down to the power supply down below. We've looked at about as much as what's here on the ground. There's a lot here. I could have shared a lot more. This is the old uh, area where they had the, uh, the blacksmith shop. That's going to do it for this location. Until the next one, goodbye from Weekend Escapades. We'll see you in the next adventure.